come back to the group. All right, let's go to this table and hear from you what drew you to Eagle Ridge. Um, my name is Sarah. My husband and I have five kids at the school, 11th grade, 10th grade, 9th grade, Citizen. Excellent. Excellent. Now, of course, a good citizen is somebody who does exactly what he's told at all times. Right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Do not think if you want to be. All right. Let's come to this table. You're up. Uh, we have uh, Jeff and Melissa Mine. We have three kids in the lower school here. Uh, Jeff and Melissa Mine. We came because we just like the structure of the classrooms, just uh, did a little bit of research into it. Uh, classical education and enjoyed what it had to offer and thought we'd be able to try. So. Good. Good. Thank you. Jeff. Yep. Good. And to your right. Uh, here I am. And we have a third grade uh, daughter. And uh, what drove me here is a class on familiar classical education system and a small size. Yeah. Discipline. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Did you want to go too? No, I'm fine. I'm okay. <laughs> I know a lot of people. <laughs> I, I'm a, I already You've moved. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I moved. You have to go again. I moved. You have to go again. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank you. Underground city, both places. <laughs> Go ahead. Hi, we are together, and um, we're John and Kate Williams, and we have a third grader and a first grader. Um, and we selected this school. Um, we liked the small class and school size, and also the pillars mm -hmm. were great. Yes, good. You're a cipher, aren't they? Good. Thank you, John and Kate. Yes. All right, and then the table behind you. I'm Diane. I have two children here, um, Matthew in sixth grade and um, a daughter in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. I came here for the curriculum. Good. Good. And let's go to your left. Erica, we have four kids here. Ninth, sixth, fourth, and second grade. So there's more to come. More. <laughs> 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 Four kids, that's a good start. Yeah, <laughs> good start. Yeah, to the, the smaller school and high pressure level, so we yeah. really appreciate the core values. Mm -hmm. core values. Good, the core values for everyone involved. Good, thank you. Hi, I'm Kim Belter, and I have a third grader and a kindergarten, and we started when the school opened, Laura School, so four years we've been through the school. And we just really enjoyed the curriculum, and um, I have to say the pillars, they just are wonderful. I think that's just been that's so needed in our culture. So, um, yeah. We, we, and we really enjoy the teachers, too. We have really high up to How I mean, they do. They have been outstanding since we started in kindergarten. It's been amazing. Good. I really enjoy every single one of them. So, we'll pass that on, Jason. Pass that on. Where is he? A wonderful staff, I should say. Everybody. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Wonderful Everybody. faculty and staff. Yeah. Good. It's wonderful. Fantastic. That's good to hear. Thank you. I've enjoyed working with them. <laughs> and you're up. Um, Sharon, and we have a 10th grade daughter, and I have to say, we tried to get into Eagle Ridge um, in 7th grade, but it was full. So we were suggested to go to the Cajun Preparatory School, which is similar, and went there for three years, and she really, really enjoyed it. a similar type thing, and then we came back here for high school, and she's really enjoyed and, you know, I have to say what really got us in the classical school was um, kind of the, your website. Um, I, it just, I love how it just outlays all of the books that they're reading. And I mean, you can see everything. And it was really hard, really a struggle to find out what some of the other schools are teaching. Mm -hmm. And here you can see all the books they're covering. And it's just so, and I went to the other school and, and I said, you know, what are they going to be studying? So I can compare it to what Eagle Ridge, you know, was teaching. And, um, you know, they named out three books that they might do. And they said it was really um, dependent on what the kids were wanting to get, you know, to learn. And so that didn't like me. <laughs> a little bit, you know. And it is not every, I'm not saying it's every school, but classical school that does that. But that was, um, that was concerning. And so we you know what I appreciate about that is over here a few people use the word tradition. And one of the things about the word, I, I grew up thinking tradition was a bad thing. Mm -hmm. That's what I was taught as a child. I've come to, to learn that the word tradition actually means something. It means to hand on, that which is handed on. And one of the things that a school does, regardless of whether it means to or not, one of the things that every school does is it receives something and it hands it on to the children. It doesn't create out of thin air. It takes something and it hands it on. So every school has its tradition. And the classical approach is an old tradition. It is a treasure chest of wisdom. And that's why you don't let the kids pick the books. Or you do within a range. You know, you, you, you might say, here's ten books, read four of these, or something like that. But you don't give the kids the authority to make decisions they cannot possibly make well. They don't know enough. But in a culture that doesn't admit that it's handing on a tradition, they give all kinds of authority to the children. And the children, you can see what the children are doing with those decisions. I mean, any, any of you in your families, you, you know that when you, when you just randomly hand decisions over to the kids without providing any guidance, you usually regret it, apparently. <laughs> right? All right? Usually. I want to be absolute here, but you usually do. So thank you. That, that concept of a, of, a, of a handing on and having the authority to do it and taking the authority, the, taking the responsibility mm -hmm. 
for the authority that we do have. Because to not give kids a reading list is to shirk your responsibility. As it does. That's what it is. You know, we, I won't go on about that because we, we go to the next person. But you're up. I'm Aaron Davies, and I have four kids here currently. Um, first, second, third, and fifth grade. Um, so there's more coming. Yeah, there's more coming. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Six kids is an even better start. I made my better. Eight kids, even better start. <laughs> Because you wanted to have all your kids in one class. No, I'm not. <laughs> Under one roof makes it easier for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And then to the back wall. Um, Steve, Dan, and uh, I have a uh, third year um, grader. My daughter is a third year a third grader here. And I just submit uh, the enrollment of a class for my son, who is expecting to be here next year for kindergarten. Okay. And uh, so, I have to say, Melissa, who introduced, uh, you know, my eager, eager reads to, to my wife and I, and uh, we actually registered our daughter to the public school at the time, but I was trying to look at other options. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the people be talking about diversity. I want, you know, my kids be a little bit different from uh, what the public school, uh, the way they teach, You know, it's just overall different thinking, different uh, being trained differently. Mm -hmm. um, it is a big advantage in the future. Good. Thank you. Train differently. I like that way of putting it. Yeah, and think differently. Your turn. Okay. Uh, my name is Ken Sebrino. I have a daughter in the kindergarten here. And uh, I brought her here because I wanted her to get an education that I wish I had been able to get when I was younger because when I found out about this tradition, I, first thing I thought was, why couldn't I have access to what these kids are going to have access to? So that really got me excited, and I like the emphasis on truth, beauty, virtue, the kinds of intangibles that nobody pays attention to. Yeah, but can you measure them? <laughs> a well-lived life. There you go. Right. But how do you measure a well-lived life? I'm, I'm being facetious, of course, but, 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 but it's hard, isn't it? it? The things that matter most don't fit on a standardized test. But here's the thing. If you pursue the things that matter most, then what does fit on a standardized test comes to life. And the more you emphasize the testing, the more you undercut the testing. I've, I've heard it said, and I think it might even be me that said it, that the, the, SAT, the SAT is the measure of the decline that it causes. Because it's a distraction. It's a distraction. You're so, people get so focused on doing well on the test that they don't cultivate the things that will enable them to do well on the test. Because it's not direct. It's not linear. It's not if you do X, you will get Y. It's more a matter of if you tend to... A, B, C, D, and E, then by some unpredictable process, J, K, and L will lead to Z. But you can't, you can't regulate it. You can't make any guarantees. That's a hard thing, isn't it? In a culture like ours, you have to have guarantees. That's why our educational system in America continues to improve year to year. <laughs> Guaranteed improvements. Well, anyway, it's, it's good to hear from all of you. Now, we're going to do, you're going to do, a bit of a language exercise right now. What's the easiest way to do this? Does everybody have something to write on? If, if you don't, here, I'll just throw some yellow paper around or something. Okay, good. There's yellow, there's pads on the table. Does everybody, if you don't have, does everybody have the table have? You'll just tear one off and then pass it over to that table. Try to make sure everybody's got one. I just whispered to my husband, this kind of thing makes me uncomfortable. I am indeed a king. Good. I am indeed a king. I am indeed a king. Good, we're getting there. Let's do one more. I am indeed a king. 
Good. All right. One of the greatest lessons I learned in school was when I was in eighth grade creative writing class. My teacher, Mrs. Holm, whom I will love and revere for the rest of my days. You know why? Because she gave me a D plus on a project when I deserved it. <laughs> um, she said to the class one day, what's a metaphor? And don't tell me it's a place where you keep cows. <laughs> and I sat in the back of that classroom for the rest of that day trying to figure out what the heck she was talking about. <laughs> about five years later, I was still thinking about that question. About five years later, I put my head on the pillow and it, just like that it came to me. Oh, and I laughed so hard. <laughs> it's not even that funny, except that when it takes five years to figure it out, it becomes pretty funny. It's now, it would have worked better if we were in the South and she had said, what's a metaphor? <laughs> right? Now some of you maybe get it. What's a metaphor? Well, we're going to do some metas. No, we're going to do some metaphors. We're going to do some metaphors. Can anybody tell me? Well, here's what we'll do. First of all, can anybody give me a simile, not a metaphor, but a simile for friendship? Those are synonyms. Those are spices. But, but I want a simile for friendship. Yes. I can't really think it's friendship is like. Yes. Yes. Friendship is like what? What is friendship like? Hamburgers and ketchup. Good. Friendship is like hamburgers and ketchup. Good. Okay. Anybody else? Friendship is like what? Peas and carrots. Good. Now they're all going to be pears, aren't they? That's okay. <laughs> pears. Friendship is like pears. <laughs> okay, so. Chocolate and peanut butter. Okay, a Reese's peanut butter cup. Roaring fireplace. Oh, okay. Friendship is like a roaring fireplace. Anything else? Friendship is like a flower. The more you look at it, the more you appreciate it. Okay, friendship is like a flower. Good. I need two more. Friendship is like. Hot cocoa on a cold day. Good. Okay, now. Here's a crucial thing. Some of you are thinking. When it comes to similes, thinking is the worst thing you can do. <laughs> Don't think. It's more like a Rorschach test, or you know, it's the, this is this is deep psychoanalysis I'm engaging around. Right First thing that comes to mind. Friendship is like. I need one more. Put some over here. It's like a seed when you water it grows. Oh, I love it. Friendship is like a seed when you water it, it grows. See, these are all. By the way, are any of these? the same kind of thing as friendship? One of the things I appreciate about all these similes is they actually are all similes. And the reason they're similes and not simple comparisons is because they're all a different kind of thing. Friendship is a seed. Well, when you, when you have a friend, you don't have a seed necessarily, right? Metaphorically, you do, though. Okay, friendship is a hot chocolate, isn't it? A roaring fire. It's not actually, but, but, but that reflects something of it. That expresses something of it. That's the crucial thing about a simile, is it has to be a likeness that is of a different kind of thing. Something that is, that's actually kind of weird when you think about it. You know, an alien might come to Earth and think, what is the matter with you people? Friendship is all this stuff. Okay, now I want a metaphor. Can anybody give me a metaphor? For friendship, this is where the metaphor comes in. Can anybody give? Have we exhausted friendship with our similes, or can anybody give me a metaphor? Now I'm going to I'm going to give you two cheats for how to come up with a metaphor. Okay, cheat number one is first just come up with a simile and then drop the word like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cheat number two is if you can't think of anything, look around the room and grab the first thing you see. <laughs> so, for example, friendship is a piano. Why not? Friendship is a piano. Who can tell me why friendship is a piano? It's beautiful. It makes beautiful music and it's stable. Good. Those are two good things I would say. Okay, so give me three or four metaphors for, for friendship. Rewarding. Now that's a description. Yeah, that's a description. Give me a picture. It's got to be something tangible, something you can see or taste or smell or something. Friendship is a wall and it holds you up. All right. Good. Friendship is a wall. Good. You're trying to get somewhere and it's constantly getting in the way. <laughs> it's a road trip.
road trip. All right, friendship is a road trip. Yeah, your imagination could probably take us a long way on this one, couldn't it? Yeah, we all, I bet we all could. Anybody else? Friendship is a, yes? Is it light that takes the darkness away? Good. Friendship is light that takes away the darkness. Good. Okay, that was all practice. Everybody knows how to do a simile or a metaphor now? Okay, because now you're going to write something down. On the paper in front of you, write down a metaphor for education. And specifically, write down a metaphor for the education that you dream of your child getting. In other words, not the education I got as a child. <laughs> your dream of what education can be. And again, it's urgent that you not think too hard because I'm only going to give you a minute. seconds left. This isn't terribly important. It just determines whether your child can stay in the school. <laughs> okay. A metaphor for the education you dream of your children getting. Now, the next step here is going to be chaos. What you're going to do next is you're going to join three other people and I want couples to, to, to split up, well, I mean, you know, separate for a couple of minutes, and get together with three other people in the room, and what you're going to do when you get in that, after it takes a half an hour for us to chaotically do that, what you're going to do is you're going to tell the other three people in your group what your metaphor is, and then in each group, you're going to select one metaphor that you're going to share with the rest of the group. Okay? So, on your marks... I want to see what kind of chaos we can have. Get set. Go. <laughs> second person. So don't take more than one minute to describe why you selected your metaphor. Okay? So go ahead, I'll give 45 more seconds to the first person. Yeah, you, you came up with the, with the key yes. thing. Yes. It, it so makes what is our Education is a, an ocean. An ocean. Because it doesn't point there. No, you can come back for more water. Wow. Oh, I'm going to need help. Okay, I like the bowl of cherry. <laughs> what did we say? Bowl. I said bowl. Yeah, that was the bowl. Education is like a box of chocolates. Yeah. yeah. So that's a box of chocolates? Yeah. Like a box of chocolates. Yeah. Like box of chocolates. Yeah. You never know what you're getting. Okay, if the first person's not done yet, go to the second person. What did I say? Uh, thirst for knowledge. This place is knowledge and <laughs> Thank 
location is like seawater. Raving water. I should have drawn this group. I could have went to a group and just said yay and not my hat. I, I think uh, anywhere. Okay, go on to the third person, please. Is that your backup? Yeah, because yeah, I was going to run out pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right now we're videoing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's a little bit different. Yeah, a little bit different. This is definitely Taylor's Taylor and Taylor. That was probably like some years ago. We're more into how to work the closet. This is cool, all this fun, this classical education. Raise your hand if you're rude with more time. Cindy Ripple. Yeah, yeah, nobody needs no. more time. All right. Yeah. You do. Okay. Back in a Go to the last person. Or we'll call a file, I should say. If you're done, put all your metaphors together and see what happens. Well, if you're done, mix them together. Oh, we're supposed to mix them together. Mix them with your blood. We're supposed to mix them together. Did you say mix them together? Make it a science experiment. Put them in a beaker. See what comes out. What's a fruit there? It's like a... I am indeed a king. Can you mind? Or I can rule myself. I am indeed a king. Or I can rule myself. I am indeed a king. You're getting there. I am indeed a king, for I know. Good. Show me that. That's why I like saying that. Okay. Now, all of you have had a chance to share your metaphor with the rest of your group, right? Okay, now in each group, you've selected one then to share with the rest of us, correct? All right, which group wants to go first on this? Your group, okay. And whose who's was chosen by your group? Whose metaphor? We combined them all. Did you? Wow, well, then let's hear it. Sailing with fireworks? Yep. Does sound like fun. <laughs> okay, do you want to explain how it happened? Well, we had a combination of ocean and deep blue sea, so we thought, and we discussed about how sailing can be dangerous, and we discussed about how sailing can be dangerous, and what five senses we use when we're watching the fireworks, and, you know, so there's that combination, and how we, how we learn to adjust our sail to the wind, and how we learn to... Um, Except, I guess, the oohs and the ahs. <laughs> yeah. Sounds a little bit like fishing for the truth. I like that. That's good. And the fireworks. That's great. Thank you. What group should we have go next? This group. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You're up. All right. Um, Excuse me. Did, did, whose was chosen? Well, we, we mashed some together. But you did, okay. From, from earlier. Okay. Which one do you want me to share? We'll go with education is crystal clear water to quench the thirst for life. Wow. Then we mashed, so that was the one we, we all liked kind of the best. But then we tried mashing them all together and came up with education is crystal clear water for the sailing ship for your brand adventure. I like it. I like it. There's a story there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Who's next? Uh, we'll go right well, if you, if you can do that. But, but if you do that, if you keep going to the right, then my nonlinear mind will start having a nervous breakdown. <laughs> so it has to be something random. Amanda, your, your group, what? Um, well, 
Well, we kind of kept the nautical thing going. Okay. We said that good education is a lifesaver. A lifesaver? I thought that's handy. <laughs> okay. Good. Something to hold on to when everything else is chaos. I like that. Yeah, good. Good. Thank you. Amanda, who's or with your group? Pick another in the next group. Yeah. Over there. Oh. April. Okay. April. Who's who's was chosen? Oh well, first we picked hers and then we put them all together. Okay, so who's going to tell us about hers? She's not allowed to. No. <laughs> I can. Okay. She said education is a construction of a city, and she oh. was educated here, which is good for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she said that you build everything together, and, and the city is where you live in your mind. I like it. It's a city where you live in your mind. It's where I try to hang out. All right. Good. Good. And then you mingled, you, you mushed one together, threw it in a beaker. What did you come up with? Uh, uh, education is a painter painting a city by candlelight on Mount Everest. <laughs> Why not? Wow. Wow. I, yeah, big time. Thank God for the imagination. That was wonderful. All right. What group is next? Uh, we'll go over to Anne. Anne. It's just this table that I think we Did you pick one? Yeah. Who's was chosen? Okay, Kate, you can't tell us. Um. <laughs> um, hers was education is education is like a waterfall or is a waterfall so if you envisioned it like you're prepared so you keep going over the waterfall and it's ever changing and flowing as if the water is really the education part of it so that it prepares you for anything that continues on down the stream we like that idea